stuff made here video. This guy is such a seriously solid... improve your game. They're fun, but they both have this fatal flaw. Fucking crazy. The ball doesn't engineer. go in if you entirely miss the hoop. And I mean, come on, it's 2020. I shouldn't have to be good at anything. This guy's such a so crazy the good is engineer. The ball is over here, and the hoop is over here. I'm building a hoop that always goes to where the ball is. <laughs> this going. is just so like third. Entirely, it's gonna go in. Or fourth. Or third iteration of a basketball Heck, hoop. Blindfolded backwards in the dark. Doesn't matter. And like my previous hoop, there's unlimited opportunities to torment my wife. All right, here's my game plan. I'm going to point this connect, which is a 3D sensing camera, at this giant wall. Oh, yes. I'm going to write software that will track whenever I throw a ball, and it will figure out where the ball is going to hit on the wall. I'm going to build a basketball hoop that I can move wherever the ball is going to go. How do you fucking do that? And it's going to do all of that between the time the ball leaves my hand and strikes the wall. I know I say this every time, but this was a really hard project. It just did not want to work. Everything that could break, broke. It just really was a lot harder than I was anticipating. Oh my gosh. How I intend this all to come together will be a lot easier to explain with the actual hoop. So let's get it made. There are tons of plasma cut and folded sheet metal parts on this machine. It's just so I really want to get fast. a plasma cutter. I don't know if I'd want it like a CNC plasma cutter. I def definitely just want a a plasma cutter in general. That's half of the rail for the I think I'm going to get it on Amazon as well as a welder well, too. Fiber I want a welder. Uh, like a, I think I'm TIG welder. All the wheels and pulleys are so printed cool on a Form 3. These are composite pulleys, so the part that needs to be strong is machined. Oh, a bandsaw. I need a bandsaw as well. French Cleat is awesome. You can rearrange your shop in just a few minutes. Termoc 24R coming in handy. Normally, two rails this far apart would be what you do when you hate yourself, but my mounts are spring-loaded, so alignment isn't very critical. It is not supposed to do that. I think this guy is the fastest engineer on YouTube. Like, he must not have a real job. Like, he must be retired and just does this all day long. There's just no way he does this in his spare time. Because he, like, the rate at which he makes videos, like, the ratio of, like, his frequency to how quality good the videos are. Like, how did he do this in fucking four weeks from doing this video? It's nuts. Or that. The system was having He's great. a tough day. I love this guy. This thing is gigantic. It looked so much smaller on the computer. It's also kind of a weird design. Like I'm my jealous? Dog, yeah, man. Designed for He's one thing got an and awesome one thing only. Day. He knows a bunch. Speed. The design is optimized so the minimum amount of stuff moves, and it's as light as possible. I'll be making an extremely light composite backboard and hoop, which will be mounted on this ridiculously over-engineered super light frame, which is on these incredibly light I also carbon want all fiber tools. tubes, Every which single are driven tool he by has, belts from these extremely heavy but stationary motors. Here's a really quick demo to give you an intuitive feel for why this matters. I built this little cart that has bearings, so very low friction. It's going to be pulled by a constant force by this belt, which is attached to a... Who is this guy? His name is Stuff Made here on YouTube. He's nuts bucket with weights in it here's the cart with five pounds on it like and here's the cart with 20 pounds some youtubers it's like they're the video quality is like here and like the project quality is like here and they can change but this guy's like video quality is like pretty good but it's like his project quality is like fucking fucking out, out of the stratosphere it's crazy this is why the stuff is so much better for the system this little cart is also the world's best banana peel hey come check this out I'm oh, no, watch out. <laughs> these motors I'm using have incredible torque, which means they can yank on these belts super hard and super fast, which is going to accelerate the hoop like a bullet. And things are probably going to get pretty violent. I'm really worried about breaking a belt, especially this one that I spliced together like a total noob. I just couldn't get one long enough. There's another interesting complication on this robot, which is tilting the hoop. And you might be wondering, why do I need to tilt the hoop? I can move it anywhere on the wall. Shouldn't I be able to direct any shot in? I actually can't. There's a variety of shots that won't uh, go in no matter where I place the hoop. If I throw the ball really hard at the hoop, it's not going to fall down into the hoop. If I want the line drive to go into the hoop, I need to tilt it down. From what I've heard, he's so like it an, directs the ball down a, uh, into the hoop. Getting the system to tilt like is responsible a retired, for a not lot retired, of these belts. He has worked a lot the reason in I have all these belts is to keep my uh, pants teams. up. Otherwise, they'll fall down and... What in the world am I reading? He asked me for help with his script. What was he thinking? 
The real reason I have all these belts is because I need the motors to be stationary. They're way too heavy to move around quickly. So I'm transferring all their power with belts. To move the hoop, I have one continuous belt. This is the really long one that's just waiting to explode in my face. It's interesting because the final position of the cart is a combination of the position of both motors. For example, oh. if I want to move the cart to the right, I rotate both motors. I, that's like a variation on the core XY, I think, um, for belt-driven CNC stuff. There's an opposite direction. I think it comes from like has two 3D belts printers attached to it. or one laser cutters. And one at the bottom. To make it tilt, you pull on one of them and push on the other. The tilt motor follows this T-shaped path and connects to the second motor up top. Ninja the tricky thing about this one is or that ninja the angle of the hoop is coupled to oh, the position. Three. I had a couple curve. this morning. As if well. I pull the cart up, the hoop points down, and if I pull the cart down, the hoop points up. And if I take things too far, stuff's gonna break. God, if so I move the tilt good. motor, it tilts. And if I move the position motor, absolutely jealous. It also tilts. So what I have to do is drive them together in the same direction, and it won't tilt. If I want it to tilt, I'll basically drive the belts different amounts, and then that'll give me a resulting tilt. Having all three motor positions coupled in this way is a bit annoying, but it allows me to build the system in a very light way. Figuring out how to rotate the motors isn't as bad as you might think. You can write it all out as a pretty simple system of linear equations, and then you can write that as a matrix and solve it directly without any equation manipulation. Mm, if you're yes. wondering why you might want to mm, know linear yes. algebra, this is one of the very useful applications mm -hmm. of it. Yes, solve it as a matrix. Cool about this design. Every pulley and idler is what? 3D printed. I didn't buy any. Most of the construction is sheet pretty he said pretty isn't simple. as bad as you might think. You can write it all out as a pretty simple system of linear equations. Ah, pretty simple system of linear equations. You can write that as a matrix and solve it directly without any fuck, equation manipulation. Fuck, fuck. If you're wondering why you might want to know linear algebra, this is one of the very useful applications of it. There's some other pretty cool things about this design. Every pulley and idler smart. is 3D printed. I didn't buy any. God, Most of the construction is sheet metal, which is really fast to make. The sliding frame is stiffened by these tension steel cables. They make it several thousand times stiffer than it would be without them. I have these spring-loaded followers, so I don't have to line the rails precisely, and a bunch of stuff I just don't have time to get into. The ball tracking software works in a similar way to my previous hoop. If you want to see how it works, you can check out the previous video. I did rewrite it to fix some of the bigger issues, and it did take me several days of straight programming. Too bad it makes for boring video. All right, it's got my software on here. It's draft one. I'm gonna give it just a five millimeter move to make sure everything's working. Let's try again. Oh. Ah, core the belt XY was sucks. a bit loose because I was afraid of breaking my terrible splice, and that let it jump off the pulley. Everything's back together. What a complex Let's try pulley the five system. Millimeter move again. Ah, that. <laughs> Shit sucks. Exactly what I was afraid was going to happen just happened. The belt ripped apart where I stitched it together. Crazy. Hopefully, that I can works. make one that will survive. Otherwise, totally hosed. All right, it only took me seven tries. I'm getting pretty good at this. I was in integration hell fixing all of the software and mechanical system issues for a long time. For days. There were a lot of problems. The wounds are still fresh, so we're going to just kind of gloss over this. We're especially not going to talk about how the cart would follow an L shape rather than a diagonal line. How, how, how does it... I don't know, man. It seems like he does projects where like, it would take a team of people to do them that fast. How I walked over eight miles in my own house going up and down the stairs trying to fix it. It's done and that's all that matters. It took quite a while to get here, but let's just move it to see if it works. Looks good enough to me. I'm going to sleep. It is really late. I want to test the system out for real throwing balls, but there's this tricky problem, which is that the Kinect, which is the 3D camera, it's mounted up here. It's looking out at the hoop in the room, but it doesn't actually know which way is up or how it's angled or where the wall is or where the hoop is. All it tells me is that this point in the picture is this far from the camera. To predict where the ball is going to go and where to move the hoop, I have to know where the connect is relative to everything. To deal with this issue, I made a calibration program. It takes an image from the connect. This represents how far everything it sees is from the camera. So what you do is you just paint where the wall is. It's like Mark so Rober on fucking crack. The floor, and then you select where the center of the backboard faces. So now the hoop knows where the connect is relative to the wall, Mark and Rover's everything's being very up. accurate. I wrote this program to avoid He's such a good engineer, hand, which probably would have taken about two hours, maybe. This took a whole day. So the big question is if this is worth it or not. Oh, come on. Is that even a question? All right, it's time to test it out. 
says it hit there, <laughs> which it did. So why no moving? I think I hear it moving. It's moving really slowly. All right, my calibration thought that a millimeter was a meter and that the world was upside down and a few other things that happen when you write code like this, but I think I have it all sorted now. How cool is that? Seeing this thing intercept the ball this is like guy, dude. the best feeling ever. But it's only half the system. I still need a backboard that can tilt with a rim on it. I've been testing without it because the way the belts interact, I didn't want to be crashing all the time with the hoop. So I've just put off making it. Let's get that made and then take it to the next level. I'm making it out of super light fiberglass and foam. I machined the backboard core on my Tormach 24R. It makes it really easy to get these inserts in the right spots. What a fucking guy. I learned how to weld. This backboard turned out awesome. It's foam core with fiberglass reinforcement. Oh, look at this that CNC it... machine. I, I want one of those. I was thinking about buying a Tormach, and then I realized I am I would be an idiot to buy a Tormach. So. Light. Or like just that, any CNC machine. machine. But I want it. stock one is incredibly heavy steel. But it's financially irresponsible as fuck to buy a CNC frame. machine. Yeah. Just buy it for it. Oh. Fuck, he's so good. That is good. the coolest thing you've ever seen. Wow. Fucking genius, bro. Fuck. <laughs> this thing is so much fun. I've got to have my wife try this out. Hey, wife. All right, here to be pranked. Why would I prank you? Yeah. Is the net supposed to be like that? Oh yeah. Let me get it. That definitely had to be a fluke. Kobe. All right, my turn. Well, you play like a nerd. Must be an engineer. I also got you this. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. So it's doing the cross product. Yeah, that's basically what does it. I thought she liked programming. You know what? Even losing this hoop is a pleasure. Now I can really make it rain. That's... God, it's the coolest fucking thing ever. This hoop is so cool. It is really satisfying to see it working. For a while there, I thought it wasn't going to work. Sometimes it just does completely the wrong thing. It sometimes thinks my head is a ball. <laughs> I need to look into the code because my optimizer keeps trying to swish the shot rather than bounce it off the backboard, which isn't the best strategy because it's more sensitive to error in my estimated trajectory. In other words, it hits the rim. Backwards, blindfolded, in the dark. Out. For Fuck my next video, shit. I'm planning to make the next version of this bat. I really oh, want yeah. to break the record. Isn't he and goddamn crazy? A metal bat. Wait. What should help? 